So hi, everyone. Uh, I am uh, Aditi Pandit, and I am a principal engineer at Ahana, an IBM company. And I'm going to talk about uh, Prestismo, which is Presto's next-gen query execution engine. So to give a bit uh, more information about uh, Ahana, so Ahana uh, used to be a startup. Uh, and uh, uh, a lot of Ahana was about uh, being like the Presto company. And what that meant is that uh, many people from Ahana had like high-level uh, organizational roles in the Presto Foundation, many committers, and uh, like the product by itself was a managed service for Presto on AWS. Uh, as of uh, two months ago, we got acquired by IBM. And uh, now uh, the Presto engine is heavily used in uh, what is uh, IBM's What's Next or data platform for Open Data Lakehouse that has got announced a few days ago. And uh, Ahana Presto and everything is a huge part of it. Uh, so uh, we're very excited about uh, the IBM acquisition. Um, IBM has a long history with open source, coming from Eclipse Foundation days, OpenShift, OpenJS, and uh, now they join the Presto Foundation. So we're very excited for uh, what we can do together. So back to the talk, um, I will give a very quick introduction to Presto and then kind of go over uh, the motivation and what Prestismo uh, involves, the components and the architecture. Uh, Prestismo is, uh, the query processing is also built over a library which is called Velox. And uh, Velox, you can think about it as uh, a library of like uh, the building blocks or data processing primitives, uh, and uh, it uses key ideas from like vectorization um, and other things uh, to have like these uh, accelerated components. And these components uh, can be reused across like different data engines. So there is a bigger community around Velox, uh, more than Prestismo. Um, so like even like Spark and other engines use it. And so I will uh, close with like uh, some information about what that broader community is. So starting with Presto. So what is Presto? Presto is uh, a SQL query engine for data analytics and the open data lake house. Uh, the Presto project uh, came out of Meta, which is probably the biggest uh, installation of Presto. Uh, but then it's also used at Uber and uh, of late by Dance. And uh, I kind of wanted to like give an idea about the kind of massive scale we are talking about. So like they're looking at clusters which are 10k plus compute cores, looking at million queries a day, 100 million queries a day at Uber. And uh, 300 petabyte data lake house, 50 petabytes, HDFS bytes read every day, and thousands of active users. So uh, Presto comes, every release of Presto comes battle tested in this like environment. And so it's a very good uh, query engine to have in your data platform. And uh, of course, now the latest entry in this is going to be IBM or what's next, uh, data lake house. Uh, in terms of Presto, uh, the project started at Meta, and originally it was for uh, high volume interactive queries. But since then, it has been expanded to also uh, work for batch workloads. Uh, there's an ETL style Presto and Spark kind of uh, offering too, which kind of combines the best of Presto and Spark. Um, and it's uh, used heavily in like reporting, dashboarding platforms. Uh, that's what Ahana had, most of Ahana's customers had. Uh, the Presto architecture, like uh, it has this very nice architecture with like a very good like connector API, so uh, it can it so it is used uh, for federated queries. So what that means is you could have multiple data sources in a single query that are actually like different storage systems, and you can combine data in a single query across those different uh, storage systems and uh, get results. And so all this lends very well uh, for usage even in uh, open data lake house uh, world. Presto has a very vibrant open source community, like uh, very fast growing, thousands of downloads. Uh, so Meta, Uber, Alibaba, Twitter, some very big names here, ByteDance, Rippling. Uh, Intel is also very, very heavily associated with the project. And so they help us with a lot of like benchmarking and the likes. Um, so yeah, so Presto is a very like good uh, query engine, open source query engine out there. And uh, 
heavily used. So like, uh, what was next for Presto? Like this Presto, uh, is this Presto small project? So uh, this is like the latest innovation in Presto. And uh, the Prestismo kind of goes very core to the data processing and query processing. So I kind of wanted to put a lot more context uh, into what goes on before you go down to like the uh, Prestismo, like query processing part of the uh, project. So uh, to put context, right, uh, where does Presto fit into your data platform? So uh, at the lowest level, you have the storage. And so your data could sit in S3 or Hadoop. Uh, there's uh, SQL stores like MySQL. Uh, no SQL stores like MongoDB. And then at the topmost layer, you have uh, your clients like Looker or Superset, Jupyter Notebooks, Tableau that are submitting queries to the Presto cluster. Uh, now the Presto cluster uh, does the query processing using uh, two variety of nodes. So there's a coordinator node and like multiple workers. Uh, the coordinator is where uh, the uh, query processing is started. It receives the query. Uh, it uh, parses and optimizes that into like a query plan with plan nodes and operators. And uh, then these uh, plan fragments are submitted to workers, which actually do like the uh, data processing. And uh, results are returned back to the coordinator, which returns it to the client. So um, as an example, uh, I've taken this like simple query. Uh, it's a modified TPCHQ1 kinds. Um, so you read from a line item table. There's a predicate on this ship date uh, column. And uh, that kind of. Uh, restricts the data to like three months. And then uh, the data is grouped by a return flag line status to compute some uh, aggregates. And then uh, all these aggregated rows are returned to the user. So uh, what, this, the, what the coordinator does is it receives this query and transforms it into a plan node plan that looks like uh, a scan filter project, which kind of reads from a line item uh, table at uh, the lowest leaf fragment level. Then uh, the results from uh, the scan are sent to a hash aggregation node that does uh, the grouping and aggregation. And then the results of the hash ag feed into a sort node that basically sorts the results by line, by return flag and line status and uh, returns these to the user. So that is just a very abstract like query plan, but the optimizer uh, kind of uh, transforms this into this uh, plan with like uh, stages and uh, fragments that are actually executed on the worker. So this is uh, what uh, a query execution plan looks like for the above query. So, um, it, uh, so it has four stages. At the lowest stage, stage three, was the scan filter and partial ag. So the scan filter is actually going to read from the line status, uh, line item table. Uh, it's going to do a partial aggregation. Uh, this feeds into the next stage, which is going to do like the final aggregation com uh, computation. Uh, this stage feeds into the third stage, stage one, which does like the sorting, and then uh, the results are emitted to the output. So your query processing happens in these fragments uh, called stages, and these stages are scheduled by uh, the scheduler and the coordinator at different workers. Uh, so what a worker gets is actually just this single fragment plan, which could be a leaf fragment plan or an intermediate plan. And the worker does all the like query processing to move the data. So when you put this into a Presto cluster, right, this is what it looks like. You have the coordinator node, which has the parser optimizer scheduler, and those stages and fragments are sent to uh, different workers for uh, data processing and execution. So um, the original Presto was all written in Java, which meant that uh, the coordinator and the workers were both in Java. And uh, while Java as a choice was OK for the coordinator, at the worker, uh, there were many operational difficulties. And a lot of them like, came from uh, the garbage collector, because that kind of introduced pauses in uh, the running of the system. And those pauses also meant that the external user saw these like kind of cliffs in the performance. And uh, you know, I mean, uh, from an engineering perspective, right, there was much more you could do with other languages like C++. 
And so like uh, that was kind of seen as a limiting uh, uh, factor for the use of Presto. And so that kind of led on to this Prestismo project. So what is Prestismo? So Prestismo is a new C++ Presto worker. It is pretty much a drop and replacement of the Java worker. And uh, so the Prestismo C++ Presto worker kind of implements the original like worker's uh, HTTP interface. So it is like the same API. Uh, the coordinator sends it plan fragments and uh, the worker executes this plan fragment, does all the data processing and uh, sends results back to like the coordinator or other workers depending on whether there's exchange in picture. And like uh, it uses the same exchange wire protocol to actually serialize and deserialize the data on exchanges. So the data format is all the same. The uh, query processing is the same. The status reporting endpoints, all that also looks very similar to what was in the Presto Java worker. So what Prestismo clusters look like is pretty much the same Presto architecture except that uh, the Presto Java worker is substituted with a Prestismo C++ worker. And so if you see like the new worker blocks, all these green blocks, which are Prestismo C++ workers, the protocols are all the same. The uh, Prestismo C++ worker, uh, like I mentioned before, is built on top of this Velox library, which is a, a library of reusable data processing primitives. And uh, the Velox library is pretty sophisticated. It has extensive use of SIMD, a lot of runtime optimizations, uh, many features uh, that uh, can help achieve like memory arbitration between like query operators, queries, a lot of like smart strategies around IO prefetching, caching. And so that lends to a much more uh, sophisticated and uh, performant and also like uh, operationally very good Oh. So um, that logistics is being left to like the team deploying the clusters because like you said, right, there are multiple things you could do. Put in a mixture of workers, so write different connectors. Uh, it does. Uh, it does in theory. I haven't seen like, well, we've tried some things of that sort. Uh, but yeah, it, it does in theory. Uh, there, 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 there's some other designs also we explored. So we didn't really go down that route that we want to do like a mixture of Java and C++ workers. Uh, there's some other designs also that we are exploring. Uh, so yeah, there is a Hive connector, there's some other connectors. So there is a connector API and people can write connectors. Uh, there are a bunch of them. Uh, so uh, Hive is the biggest one. Uh, there's some other like simple ones we have done for TDCH, TDCBS, so, you know, data generation and the like. And uh, Hive can be reused across like most of these lake house kind of things. And so like uh, depending on like, uh, so Ahana had even like a BigQuery connector and also like based on like what we are uh, giving the customers, we will consider building C++ or using Java in some way. Uh, so yeah, the benefits of Prestismo, we, saw, we see a huge performance boost. Uh, the same query processing can be done with much smaller clusters. Uh, in terms of operational behavior, avoids performance cliffs. There's no Java processes, JVM, garbage collection. Memory management, SIMD is all under exclusive control. Uh, improves efficiency. Uh, it's easier to build and operate at scale. So uh, because of the use of Velox, they're reusable and extensible primitives used across multiple engines. And so performance is better understood. Uh, to put some context on the kind of results we're seeing, so uh, this is a relatively old result from two months ago uh, because this was an Ahana clusters when we were independent. Uh, so uh, 
the uh, result, so, the, so I'm using the, like the TBCH uh, benchmark here. Um, the hardware was, this was uh, uh, a HANA uh, managed service on AWS. So your data is all parquet, uncompressed, unpartitioned uh, on S3. And uh, the cluster was uh, made of uh, our uh, FIDO X large nodes. So there was one coordinator, four workers, and 128 gigs of memory. So we ran uh, all 22 read-only queries, uh, did multiple runs, so the numbers are aggregated across those runs. So in order to get a warm run, we did like six warm-up runs and three actual runs. And we see like really encouraging good numbers. So in terms of a power metric, we can see that uh, like the throughput of uh, Prestismo is much improved. Uh, so in the case of throughput, higher is better. We see like uh, 4.3x improvement. Uh, in terms of total elapsed time, uh, the queries run much more faster. And so like uh, the total elapsed time, we see an improvement of 2.6x. In terms of total CPU time, again, lower is better. Uh, so we saw an improvement of nearly 3x. So uh, at the best, we do see that you can run a cluster with one third the number of CPUs and uh, can run the same set of queries. Uh, the memory usage is also better. We see 1.3x. So this is uh, results of each query. It's mostly all green, so elapsed time, CPU time, and memory usage. Uh, Q15 was the only one that's red, and we kind of understand what was limiting there and have fixed it. So that was about Prestismo and uh, the kind of uh, improvements we are seeing. Uh, so the Prestismo architecture as such, right, is just like a, a wrapper over uh, the Velox library. So, I mean, we take the Prestismo plan fragment, convert it into a Velox plan, set up the exchanges, and just hand over the Velox driver, as it is called, a plan for execution, and uh, Velox does the rest. So at this point, I'm going to completely switch into uh, Velox and the Velox open source library and what it is. So uh, Velox, uh, again, the library came out of Meta. And uh, last year, uh, we had this VLDB paper, uh, which kind of goes into how uh, Velox is used in all the different uh, systems at Meta. So uh, the key idea behind Velox was that uh, the metadata platform had gotten like pretty extensive. And so it had, there were multiple data engines in there. So there was Presto, Spark, uh, there's a streaming engine, there's uh, uh, engines for machine learning workloads for like uh, feature engineering and the like. And all the data engines like at a high level have very similar uh, architecture. You have some kind of query language of SQL in our case uh, that is transformed by the coordinator uh, into some kind of intermediate representation parsed, optimized. And then you have some kind of fragment plan that actually has uh, the data processing like plan uh, that is run in some like data processing engine over a runtime. So all these like engines kind of had very similar architecture and each one was like rewritten in different languages and maintained by different teams. And so that kind of uh, led to like this whole uh, big ecosystem of engines and sometimes like uh, the knowledge was just not reusable. And uh, what the architects saw is that uh, like at least at the like execution part, right, of the data processing primitives, there was a lot of scope to have like a common library uh, which can be built, uh, you know, using all these sophisticated means of vectorization and uh, a sophisticated runtime and reuse this across all the different engines. And that kind of lent for a much better experience because like the primitives are the same. So like uh, the behavior of all the data processing is similar. Uh, it is well tuned across all these engines. And so that's, that's where Velox came in. Um, so what, what does Velox look like, right? So similar to like Presto plan fragments, your Velox, it's not an engine, it's a library but it, you give it like a graph of uh, plan nodes. And the plan nodes are sort of, they look sort of similar to Presto plan nodes, but like, uh, like different engines like Spark also use similar plan nodes. Um, and uh, so, so the API comprises of this plan node tree and a driver. And uh, basically uh, the 
user of Velox that, uh, gives the driver a plano tree and an executor, a CPU executor, and just asks it to r run the data processing uh, for it. So what Velox does as a first step is to convert this plan node into operators. And so the operator is the actual execution. So the operator does the actual uh, data reading, data processing, you will. And so in like my previous example, right, uh, the fragment had a table scan node, aggregation node, or order by node. Uh, Velox translates this into a table scan operator, filter project operator, hashtag operator, order by operator. And um, if you kind of dive into like what is happening in like the Prestismo worker, right? The, uh, so the, the worker got this task. Now, because your data is well partitioned, you can exploit the parallelism by just like duplicating that operator pipeline in multiple drivers. And so like each driver pipeline is like one thread of execution, but you can repeat this for different partitions in the same like uh, task. So your uh, Velox driver takes the operator pipeline and depending on the desired parallelism, uh, repeats the pipeline uh, into drivers. And uh, what the driver does is that it's a single thread of execution of operator pipeline. So the driver loop, basically uh, it, it uses the executor to, exe to like uh, get CPU and get the threads it needs for the execution. But essentially what it's doing is it's given an operator pipeline and it is like uh, doing all the data transformations across it. So uh, in this diagram, right, the data flows from like bottom to top, uh, but then there's a processing that's being done in three operators. So what the Velox driver tries to do is it gets data from the topmost operator that uh, has data available for it. And so it'll just keep calling get output, get output on the operators. And like the topmost operator that has output rows for it uh, returns uh, the rows. And that could be just like put on the output uh, on the network, or then like fed into like the uh, downstream operator uh, for it to continue its processing. So that's about like the orchestration for the data flow. Uh, but what Velox kind of uh, brings, uh, so most of the IP in Velox is around like uh, all these building blocks. Uh, so. Uh, in terms of the concepts, right, Velox is all very vector-based. So like all your data processing is happening on vectors. Uh, the vectors could have different encodings. Uh, so you could have constant vectors, flat vectors, and dictionary encoding, which is like uh, the most uh, sophisticated and performant. Um, and like your operators, right, uh, they kind of work on these vectors and do the processing that's needed. A lot of the processing is in tight loops, uh, exploit CPU instruction pipelining. Uh, all these vectors are allocated from memory pools, and the memory pools are kind of hierarchical across like tasks, operators. And uh, a lot of the Velox code uh, optimizes for zero co copies in the uh, processing. The vectors are reused across like operators. So this gives us like very fine track of uh, the memory usage. Um, and vectors can be as big as needed. The buffer pool uh, is based on the Umbra design, which is uh, pretty state of the art. So like, because of this vector representation and the dictionaries encoding and all that, right, we can do very sophisticated uh, processing. So like for expressions, right, if you know that, uh, you know, your vector is dictionary encoded, it has so many distinct values, and uh, like all your rows can be just like basically indexed into those distinct values. So you can compute like expressions only on the distinct values uh, if your expression operates that way. Nulls can be handled in one go. So I have a lot of material in the slides, but I just want to like give, an, give a very high level idea of the concepts in Velox in the interest of time. Uh, Velox also has building blocks with uh, many runtime optimizations. And like, so uh, one of uh, the examples I kind of wanted to give was in hash table. Uh, the hash table is used in, aggregate, in the uh, aggregation operator, the hash hashtag join uh, window. And, uh, the kind of sophistication that can be done is right because you're processing these vectors, you know a lot of stats about the contents of those vectors. What are the how many distinct values are there? How many nulls are there? And uh, based on like the distribution of data in the vectors, you can uh, adapt your hashing strategy based on the key distribution. And so, like uh, in this example, right, you start with like just array mode hashing if you know you have less than two million entries, and kind of go to a normalized uh, key rep, uh, key hashing or, or like a full blown hash function based on like uh, the kind of data you see at runtime. Uh, Velox also has a, a spiller framework, 
And so what that is is that like, okay, um, say like in your hash aggregation or uh, during hash join, uh, you kind of need to get all your data and hold it in memory for like the operator for the operator before it can actually generate any output data. Uh, so what the spiller framework lets you do is that if this like data is very big and like each partition of the data that you operate on is also very big, uh, then you're not going to be able to hold everything in memory. But you can spill to disk. So you can, uh, during runtime, you can uh, ask a partition to spill to disk. And what this will do is it'll spill its uh, data in spill files. Uh, so it'll sort and append the data in spill files. And uh, your processing can just proceed. So which are, uh, all the partitions that fit in memory, I mean, you can just process them. And then once you're done with the stuff that fits in memory, you can uh, go and read the spill partition from disk and continue processing. And like when you have a framework like this, right, uh, this means that uh, you can do something sophisticated like memory arbitration. If you have an operator that's just blocking you because like it's hogging all the memory, right? And like uh, in a case where like, the, if the upstream operator is being held, bla held back because like uh, a, 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 an operator downstream is like hogging the memory, right? Then basically your query doesn't proceed. But if you have a feature like memory arbitration, you can reclaim memory from operators and give it to like other operators to proceed so that like the query processing like advances. And this memory can also be shared with other queries to improve overall usage. And uh, Velox has this like sophisticated I.O. subsystem. There is an async data cache, which has all these optimizations uh, related to prefetching, um, coalescing read requests based on like uh, the runtime and a uh, lot of nice stuff. Well, you are, but then uh, you it's a trade-off between like getting the query to complete and the performance. Uh, so this Velox uh, library, right, it, it's, it's a very generic framework that can be used across multiple like data engines. So uh, this has been in the open source like for a few years, I mean like two or three years, two years now. And so uh, there are other data engines uh, also in the open source that have been built using Velox. And like the big one here is Gluten, which was a Spark SQL engine built by Intel. And uh, they're, they're going to talk about it in other forums. Uh, the other uh, two big ones is PyVelox, which is Python binding. So Velox, uh, it's done by Voltron Data. And uh, the Torch Arrow a library, in, well, PyTorch, that's done by Meta it's for like its ML workloads, that's also out there in the open source. So that's what I had. Uh, please join our community. So there's a Presto community, the Velox community. Uh, I have uh, all the links for GitHub and Slack, other forms. Yeah, the C library, yes, yeah. So how does that work in terms of operating system slash a, a, a process architecture? Like, are there different binaries for the different Linux distributions? Are there different binaries for uh, yeah. ARM versus Yeah, so ARM versus Intel is stuff? like, yeah, there are different compilations, different binaries. So based on like your uh, deployment, you kind of build the library accordingly, and like, yeah. So the Presto small, so like, it just pretty much links to this library, and uh, yeah. And then different you have different binaries for the yeah. for the, yeah, for the different R, I guess. Yeah. And, okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, like, uh, based on, yeah, because like the SIMD libraries are very different based on architecture. So uh, you're saying like, okay, so if I understand your question right, you're saying that like, say I'm reading a parquet file and that has statistics already. Yes. And like you have this C and the Java runtimes and like how do they, so um, I can talk a lot to like what's done in C, or the C++ uh, like parquet reader. So uh, it has a lot of optimizations to exploit those statistics if they are there. So like if you know what is like, 
the min column value and max column value, and you have a filter and you know that you're going to filter everything, right? You just don't read that uh, row group. So uh, the runtime has those kind of optimizations. Yeah, so Velox library has a parquet reader, which does all this. Okay. So we, we, we redid the parquet reader, yeah, because, because we wanted <laughs> those fancy numbers. Yeah, a lot of the improvements in those numbers came from these parquet readers. I mean, do you actually uh, publish the profile of the difference, like the, the performance profile of what happens with C++ compared with Java? And where it's spending your time and where, uh, where you are getting the advantages. Or do you just think if so, because it's not Java and it's not doing Java collections and this is a smart library with vectors, then all of those are, are all the reasons for it? Yeah, so Ahana didn't do that, but I believe Meta did because they had to kind of make a case uh, for okay. this. So they have, they have two clusters, Java and C++, and run the same workloads, and uh, they can demonstrate the behavior change. Okay. Yeah, so basically uh, we wrote, yeah, we wrote the, uh, what is this, is the TPCH, uh, so, we, so we first ran queries to generate the TPCH parquet data, and that was written on like the S3 that's wired to our cluster and made a call. Yeah, we wrote it uncompressed and parish, yeah, onto S3 and then so that, that was done in a different set of queries, and then the read queries just read what we had written. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, then, uh, yeah, then there's much more you can do with it, but like, this is showing it that trying to show the numbers demonstrated at this like uh, level of uh... have you got the results for things like when you use compressed ones or you've got optimized partitions to see what the the difference would be in those cases when you've optimized the the file formats so i because we wrote a new parquet library right i don't think we handled all the compressions uh, but uh, in terms of partitioning uh, we haven't, I mean, we didn't do a study because, uh, yeah, this was in March, we got acquired and so they're working on more. Because yes, it'd be interesting to see whether or not it showed the same improvements yeah. in those sort of cases. In, yeah, th yeah. Th that's, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, um, now you have the Hive connector. Uh, we haven't uh, done like the full SQL spec yet. So yeah, I mean, uh, full TBCH benchmark, uh, full TBCDS benchmark, we want to get there. Uh, but yeah, we don't have all the query processing for TBCDS. So we do, uh, it, does, it does a lot of it. There are some things that were left like decimal type and like character type. And so there are these like a tail end of things that need to be done. Uh, but it's pretty far along like. Uh, but like the, the Java connector and the connector are better than So, okay, so the Hive connector is pretty, like, feature complete. What is not feature complete, and I, there are just, like, few things. So, like, there's some operators that were used for more optimal, like, uh, so we, we don't change the optimizer here, right? So, like, uh, the optimizer generated some of these more optimal operators, like there's something called mark distinct node and all that. And so those operators need to be implemented in Velox. So, yeah. The query would still run. So I, yeah, I mean, I think White Dance did do the whole DBCDS run. But like there, there are some parts of it that need to make it to open source. Yeah. 